Stan Gibalisco here, ham radio operator and station Whiskey One Golf Victor. I'm here uh, to explain the principle of operation behind my deck mounted vertical ground plane antenna. This is the original design that I used a 16-foot vertical radiator and four 16-foot radials underneath the deck. Actually, uh, because the antenna is mounted on the edge of the deck, the radials were all on one side underneath. Approximately eight feet above the ground so not an ideal arrangement, but better than mounted directly on the ground. The radials go to the shield or the braid of the coaxial cable feed line, a 50 ohm uh, RG8-X feed line. The antenna radiator goes to the center conductor of the coaxial cable, a very basic antenna which I uh, showed a picture of in a video, uh, in another video in this collection, the W1GV antenna and station video. But that just shows a, a slight variation that I made to this antenna. I decided that I wanted to get the current loop for this antenna, which appears right near the base, a little higher up above the deck. And I thought that I could do that if I extended the length of this radiator somewhat and then right at the base installed a capacitive reactance in the form of a capacitor which would compensate for the inductive reactance produced by making the radiator longer. Well, I went to Radio Shack, the local Radio Shack store, and found two 100 picofarad fixed ceramic capacitors, connected them in series to get a 50 picofarad capacitance at the base. And by trial and error, found that if I extended this antenna from 16 feet to 22 feet, It would again resonate on the 14 megahertz band, which, if you're a ham radio operator, you probably already knew that that would be the band that this antenna would be designed for. So now we have the radials the same length. This antenna is in effect, as far as the transmitter can tell, or the feed line can tell, it's still a resonant antenna, but the radiation resistance is just a little bit higher. The standing wave ratio that I got on with this arrangement was approximately 1.2 all across the whole band. Uh, in apparently increasing this length also increases the bandwidth of the antenna. With this antenna and a clear shot to South America, I am able to work stations easily on CW and PSK31, that's phase shift keying, which I've also described in a couple of videos in my collection, with only 7 to 10 watts of output power at the transmitter. That's not doing too bad for uh, an antenna like this. Uh, so it, uh, I can surmise that this antenna works. Stan Gibalisco out.